Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Com Prepper with another video. Uh, I think this is going to be my third video and today's video is going to be the first of many that cover specific types of radios and today's video is about citizen band radios or CB radios. Citizen band radios, uh, they're limited to 5 watts of power. Amplifiers are illegal. Even though they're out there, I wouldn't recommend getting one. Uh, they come with amplitude modulation or signal sideband modulation, or both, depending on the price and the, uh, the price of the unit. The typical range of a CB radio is one to five miles, and again, this is depending on the topology and the terrain. So, if you have a straight desert road that goes for several miles, you're going to have fine communications. If you start getting into a mountainous area with lots of foliage, that's going to impact range. Uh, a specific note for CB radios, uh, CB radio frequencies came from what they used to call the amateur radio 11 meter band and it's in a 27 megahertz frequency range and this is a shortwave band so atmospheric signal skips can occur not always but it can providing communications over hundreds of miles or even thousands of miles however for a prepper the signal skip phenomena is not predictable and should not be a real be relied upon for your emergency communications plan. CB radios are flexible. There's numerous antenna options, brand of radios, sizes of radios, and all sorts of accessories for cigarette lighter jacks, clips to go onto the battery, portable bags to carry them around in, nice microphones, desktop microphones. There's a, a lot of options out there that make a CB radio a very flexible uh, item to have in your preps. And they're low cost. You can probably get a radio for 40 bucks to $200. Radio Shack always seems to have one or two on sale around $60. They're not an expensive item to have in your prep. The technical specifications, the down and dirty, it's a 40 channel radio service. The channels are designated by the Federal Communications Commission. And those channels are spread across frequencies from 26 megahertz to 27 megahertz. Again, they're 5 watt radios. Their mode of modulation is amplitude modulation and or sig single sideband modulation. Antenna configurations, you can get whip antennas, you can use dipole antennas, you can use box antennas, you can use loop antennas, you can use beam antennas, but the most common antennas used for CB radios are whips and dipoles. A typical antenna size, uh, a whip would be four feet. Uh, I think some of the commercially packaged antennas are 102 inches long, typically for vehicles. Or you can buy a dipole antenna, and that would probably be around uh, 18 feet long. Power requirements for CB radio, 12 volts DC. So you can hook it up to a car battery. If you have a little solar system that's charging a 12 volt battery, you can run a run run one of these radios off that battery just fine. Here's a list of the frequencies. Like I said, uh, channel one starts at 26.965 megahertz and spans 40 channels up to 27.405 megahertz. During their peak use in the 1970s and probably early 80s. Uh, over time, Channel 9 had become known as a public safety channel for calling like police officers if you're in distress. And over time, Channel 19 became the national calling channel. Uh, a lot of commercial trucking truck, truck drivers and trucking companies operate on Channel 19, and that's still the case today. So you're going to find most of your traffic around Channel 19. I'm not sure if uh, municipalities are still monitoring Channel 9 as an emergency channel. I'm not going to cover mobile configurations because I'm fairly confident everybody's seen a CB radio in a vehicle and what the antennas look like. They can be hooked to the bumper, hooked to the lip of the trunk, magnetic antennas put on the roof. Uh, there's plenty of options out there and it's not that uh, complicated to do. For base stations though, you do have some other options which can improve your range. Uh, the top left hand clip art image is of a dipole antenna and that would be probably around 18 feet between the two traps and you see the little black coax cable going down to a radio so you know you could haul a radio around like a little man pack radio throw a rope up in a tree pull your antenna up uh, 
make your uh, radio call, conduct your communications, and roll all that up and uh, keep bugging out if you had to. On the right-hand side is a more expensive option. This is called a beam or Yagi antenna, and typically they have a rotator because they're directional, so you can turn that to areas where you want to talk to. Uh, there's a lot more gain, a lot more directivity in them, but, but they are much more expensive and evolve a little bit more effort to mount them to a roof. And then the lower left-hand corner is a, a typical whip antenna, and this is an omnidirectional antenna, so it's radiating and receiving 360 degrees around the antenna. And you get a little bit above the house, you get a little bit of increase in range and reception as well. Uh, a warning though, when setting up base station antennas outside, never attempt to install an antenna without assistance, and always watch out for power lines and other utility lines or feeds coming in your house or even your neighbor's house. Uh, antennas are metal and power lines kill. Every year, amateur radio operators are killed putting an antenna up in their backyard because they lose their balance and the, the pole goes behind them and they're trying to hold it up because their brand new antenna is on it and it hits that high voltage line coming off the telephone pole. Zap, they're dead. So always be careful of that. Always have help. Uh, when in doubt, call your utility. Uh, turning the circuit breaker off in your house does not cut the power off outside of your house. So if you have a lot of power lines in your area, or, or any, uh, get help. And don't be afraid to call the utility. That you know They can shut that off if, if you need to get an antenna up. And when in doubt, always call a professional. Uh, comms prepper, my recommendations. Uh, if you only get one for interoperability and the ability to collect information, every prepper should have a CB radio and a small antenna to go along with it. If you decide to uh, do a base station setup, I recommend getting some quality coax cable. Uh, the small skinny stuff has a lot of loss and if you're going distances over 50 feet you're really going to impede your radio's performance and you already have you only have five watts to start with so y you want to get as much of that power from the radio to the antenna as possible. Uh, when you install a base station you want to have a dedicated ground rod installed for your base station again before you hammer an 8 foot copper rod into your backyard call call a professional call your local utility because you don't know if there's a gas main under there a water line, a power line I put a ground rod through my cable TV once and I think a lot of states have 1-800 numbers you can call that, and the utilities will mark the lines in your yard for free uh, I think in my state they say call before you dig they, and they come out and they'll mark it Invest uh, 15 20 bucks and uh, get a lightning arrestor. This is a little uh, box that goes in line with your transmission coax that's hooked to your ground system and your ground rod that we just talked about. So if you get a lightning strike, it'll send that lightning down to the, the ground rod in theory and keep that power out of your station and damaging your radio or your computers or anything else around your house. And if you're considering getting CB radio and you're not a radio person or have a lot of experience, I recommend uh, reviewing the Wikipedia CB radio article. I'll put a link below. It's, it's pretty informative and it gives you some good background, some good technical information. But all in all, you know, for a $40 item, I, I highly recommend you have one CB radio in your preps because you never know when you're going to need it. And thank you for watching. This is uh, the comms prepper and have a good day. Thank <laughs> you.